everybody, this is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report, and today we're here at this beautiful nature preserve near my hometown, and this preserve has been set aside for public use by the college and by the land trusts in North Carolina, and I know that this is a really great place to find salamanders because there's a wetland habitat. Now this year we've been here several times, and we have not found any salamanders at all, but really today uh, it's a perfect day for salamanders. It was a little bit rainy. Uh, now it's about 70 degrees. It's sunny outside. They should be under the logs and it's about the time for their migration. So today we're going to be searching for spotted, uh, marbled, and slimy salamanders out here in the Nature Preserve. I don't know if we'll find any, but I'm excited to do some spring exploring. Well, let's get started. Oh my gosh, first log? No way. Hey. Oh no, holy cow. That's a fast one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me get my, let me get my hands moist first. Hang on. Oh my gosh, we found one, we found one. Look at that. Look at that, guys. Can you see him? Whoa, how gorgeous is that? That right there is a marbled salamander. All right, let's get this camera set up. Wow, guys, that's just amazing. Very first log flip of the day, and we already found one of our target species, the marbled salamander. Now this is a very close cousin to the mole salamander. Uh, they're pretty easy to identify. As you can see, it's a lot chunkier than other salamander species. Uh, it almost looks chubby. Also, they have that marbled pattern, so they're black and they have these white stripes in their back. Now this is a gorgeous specimen. I absolutely love marbled salamanders. And let me see if I can get them turned around to the camera. Now, marbled salamanders may look like lizards. Watch out, buddy. Now, marbled salamanders may look like lizards, but they're absolutely amphibians. Uh, so salamanders, even though they do live in the woods rather than in the water for most of their lives, a marbled salamander does still require its skin to be moist to survive, and that's why this species is found under logs a lot. So especially after it rains like that, and the soil under that log is moist, that's where you'll find these. Now, these do breed during this uh, spring season here in North Carolina. It's late April, and normally it's more like early or mid-April that these guys will come out in large numbers to migrate and breed. But because this winter was so unusually cold, the marbled salamanders were kind of forced to migrate a little bit later in the season so they didn't die of cold. Now these salamanders are here at this specific location because there are wetlands nearby. Now wetlands are an ecosystem that's been damaged quite a lot by urban expansion. Very few wetland ecosystems are left preserved, but this is one of the few. Actually, this is the only wetland ecosystem I know that is preserved in the area, and that's why all the salamanders come here. Now salamanders are important to the ecosystem for a variety of reasons. Uh, one reason is because they eat macroinvertebrates under the logs. So, you know, when mosquitoes breed under the logs, these guys help eat the pupa uh, and keep those numbers down. They also feed them things like beetles and worms, of course. Uh, but salamanders are also food for lots of animals. Uh, they have no teeth or claws or anything like a lizard, nor do they have scales. So they're quite easy prey for, a variety, for many different predators here. You know, birds, snakes, anything like that would love to eat a salamander. Uh, or raccoons also. Now, salamanders are important to scientists, however, because they're what we call an indicator species, and especially an animal like a marbled salamander, which is a lot harder to find than some other species, uh, is going to be hugely important for any research team, because what researchers do is they come into these habitats, and let's say I wanted to assess the health of the wetland, I would look at population density and health of the marbled salamanders, and that could help me estimate how healthy the ecosystem is. They're just so cute too, my gosh. Look how darn cute they are. Their eyes are adorable, their toes are adorable, they're little chunky, chunky salamanders. I love them so much. Now, when you're handling a salamander, you do wanna make sure your hands are moist. So we did rub our hands in that moist soil uh, because your skin oils can damage their skin because their skin is extremely sensitive. But we're gonna get this guy right back under the log. And whenever now, you find a salamander, it's always good to put it back under the log that it came from yeah. because the salamander chose to be under there. Um, so if you ever do remove one, take pictures or anything. So just set the log back first and then you can put the salamander beside it and it'll actually crawl back under it on its own. Don't put the salamander under first. So, if you watch, we should set him down right beside there, and he knows exactly where he is, and he'll crawl right back under his log. My yeah, there he goes. Well, everyone, that's all for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed and learned something new about the marbled salamander. 
make sure to check out my new website using the link in the description. And subscribe to my channel for new wildlife content coming every Saturday morning. This has been Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.